everyone, welcome to another Procreate tutorial. This is the drawing that we will be completing in today's video. If you are new here, I mainly post Procreate tutorials, so if that is something you're interested in, go ahead and subscribe. Otherwise, before we get started, the only thing that you will need to do is download the color palette. I have it linked in the description below. It's totally free to download. Just open up the file that downloads and it'll automatically pop into Procreate so that you can use the same colors as you follow along with the video today. I will also post the canvas dimensions, color profile, and layers needed on the screen here so that you can use that to set up your canvas. So take a minute to get everything ready and then come back and we'll get started. Okay, here is the color palette that we will be working with today. So for this drawing, we're actually going to leave the background color alone, leave it just white or whatever color it's at. And we are going to start and make our background on this first layer since we're going to do a gradient. So we are going to just be on layer one, grab the first color on the first row of the color palette and drag and drop it to fill our background color there. So essentially this is going to be the darkest color on the edge. So we're going to make two lighter circles inside and then blend them together to get a nice like circular gradient pattern for our background. Go to our layer menu, add a new layer above this. Grab the second color on the top row. Grab our monoline brush under the calligraphy tab. Set it to just 100%. And we are just going to draw a perfect circle. So draw a circular shape. Hold it down until it snaps into a perfect shape. And then touch your finger to the screen to make it a perfect circle. You know, we're going to make it pretty big. You know, just kind of leaving a little bit around the edges. And then go ahead and fill this in. Then we just want to make sure that our circles are centered. So let's grab the arrow tool. Make sure that snapping is turned on in the bottom left. And we are going to drag this to the center where we see the two yellow lines, which means that we're perfectly in the center of the screen. If you need to, you can also adjust the size here on uniform to make sure that we keep our same circle shape, but just go ahead and make sure that we're still centered if you do any resizing. Okay, then we're going to go to our layer menu, make a duplicate of our circle layer. So slide to the left and hit duplicate. Now we are on this top circle and we are going to grab the third color on the top row and drag and drop to fill that in. It'll cover up our the first circle that we made entirely, but now we'll just click the arrow tool on uniform, downsize it a good bit, and then go ahead and drag it and snap it to the center of the screen like so. So we just have our three different colored layers here. Okay, so now I'm going to go to my layer menu and snap all three of these layers together so they're all on one layer, like so. And then to get our gradient, we are just going to click the wand icon, click Gaussian Blur, and we are going to drag this up pretty far to about 50%. And then now we can start our main circle that we're going to draw our picture on. So we'll go to our layer menu, add a new layer, grab the fourth color on the top row, same monoline brush, same 100%, and we are now going to draw another circle. Hold it down, touch your finger to the screen to make it a perfect circle, and then go ahead and fill it in. Again, click our arrow tool and we'll center it and you can resize it if necessary, but we do want it to be pretty small. This isn't going to be a huge circle here so nothing too crazy i would say that if you cut it into like fourths my circle is touching like one quarter in on each side so somewhere about in there and just again if you do any resizing make sure to recenter it okay go to our layer menu again and make a duplicate of this new circle layer here now because this is just going to be our edge color so now we need our inside circle that our picture is going to be drawn on so that will be this one. So grab the top circle layer here, grab the fifth color on the top row and drag and drop to fill that one in. It'll again 
eclipse the one behind it until we grab our arrow tool on uniform and downsize it a little bit and recenter it. And then this is just kind of giving us the edge of our circle. So we just want a nice little edge of our previous circle color showing all the way around like so. Awesome. Okay, so now we are going to start on our main picture inside this circle here. So the first thing that we're going to do is kind of add like a little sun glow in the top corner of our circle. And we are again going to kind of give that like a gradient. So to do that, we are going to go to our layer menu on this top circle layer here. Click on it and set it to alpha lock. Grab the third color on the top row of our color palette. Grab our monoline brush again and now again we're going to make another circle. So in this top writer kind of area here we are just going to draw a circular shape. Hold it down, touch your finger to the screen, resize it as you need to right now because we won't be able to move it since it's attached to this circle layer. So you can move it around, click this circle button on the top to adjust it as well so then you can move it around. But we just want like a little portion of it showing, but you can resize it here as well. If you need to resize it, don't use one of the blue dots because that will change the shape of it. You can always click circle to go back to a circular shape, but you want to click in between the two dots. That's where you want to touch to resize the whole circle and keep it in a nice circle shape. But yeah, just kind of place it wherever, just kind of, I'm going to kind of pick this top right area and then go ahead and drag and drop to fill that in. If yours overfills like mine did, just hold your pen on the screen and slide the left to turn the threshold down, even sliding all the way down. I didn't quite get it, so I'm just going to undo it, redo it, and drag it down some more until it's just inside our circle here. Sometimes when you undo it, your circle will move back to where it was. So if you need to redo the entire circle, you can do so. Just undo till you just have your main color here and redo the circle entirely. But now that we have our circle laid down or what's showing of it, and we have our layer set to alpha lock, we are going to grab our wand icon and hit Gaussian blur again. And again, we'll drag this up to maybe 20 to 30% somewhere in there to get a nice kind of light in the sky here. Okay, awesome. So that is it for like any changes we're gonna do on that layer. So everything now will be a clipping mask to this layer. So first we're going to make a little set of mountains in the background. So let's go ahead and add a new layer on our layer menu. Right above our circle layer here, click on it and set it to a clipping mask. And that just means that we will only color inside of our shape but it's on a separate layer so we can like move things around and change things and we're not just constantly drawing on the same circle layer. So we can delete them, we can redo them, things like that. So that's why the clipping mask is necessary. So we will grab the second color on the top row of our color palette and we are going to grab our selection tool. We're going to set it to freehand with color fill turned on. And I'm just going to start on the left side here a little over halfway maybe up my circle and just barely and I'm just going to kind of slowly draw some kind of mountain shapes in the background just going up and down here and there very very lightly nothing too sharp or crazy and then go and then draw it around and connect it to the beginning to have it fill in and then this is what we're left with so mine looks kind of weird in some places so I'll do it again but that is the idea. Okay, so something like this, and then again, like I said with the clipping mask, if you need to, you can click the arrow tool and you can kind of move it around. You can move it down, move it up, you can resize it a little if you need to, anything like that. But that is all we're going to do on that layer. So now we're going to add a new layer above this, click on it and set it to a clipping mask as well. And when you have multiple clipping masks, they all clip to the same shape. So we're not clipping to our new mountain layer, even though it's right above that. We're still clipping to our main circle layer here. So on this layer, we are going to draw the first like snowy hill in the background. And so we are going to grab the sixth color on the top row, 
and stick with our monoline brush. So I'm going to start here again about halfway, maybe right under where I started my mountains. Just kind of make a nice little wavy hill and then go around and connect it to the other side again, like so, and then go ahead and fill it in. So something kind of like this. So I can see most of my mountains, but if yours covered it up in some areas, that's okay. Awesome. And then we're going to draw one more snow layer in front of this one. So we'll go to our layer menu, add another layer, click on it and set it to a clipping mask. Grab our next color in line, the seventh one on the top row. And we're going to have another snow layer now in front of this previous one. So I'm going to start a little lower on the left side. And again, just kind of make some nice kind of wavy, curvy line. Connect to the other side and fill it in. Okay, make any adjustments that you need to to your hills now that you have them placed. But then this is what we should have now. So now we are going to make the background trees. So we're going to have some like on the back hill really small, and then we'll have some closer to us that are bigger, but they're all gonna be behind this front most white snow layer. So we're going to add a layer right in between these. So right in between our two kind of snowy hill layers right in there, it'll automatically set itself to a clipping mask. We are going to draw one tree and then multiply it a bunch of times to get our others. So we'll just grab this first color on the second row of the color palette to start. Same monoline brush. Let's drop the size to like 30%. And what I'm going to do is just kind of start in just the middle here, kind of in the sky so that I can see my whole tree. But so I am first going to make just a perfectly vertical line to kind of be a guide. So I'm just going to make a straight line up and down, hold it down, touch your finger to the screen to make it perfectly vertical. So I made it about this big. This would probably be the biggest tree. They'll be much, the rest will be much smaller than that. So we'll be able to downsize them. So I'm just going to start on the tippy top here and I'm going to do the left side first. So I'm, so I'm just going to draw like a really skinny kind of oval shape that goes from the top and then connects back to our base like so and then i'm going to start at the same point and make another one a little bit bigger another one another one and then i'm going to do one more one at the bottom pretty big that connects to our base at the bottom as well then we're just going to do the same thing on the other side kind of mirroring it try to make it pretty similar but it doesn't have to be perfect And then we're just going to fill in the different sections. So we'll drag and drop into a section. And then at the top, we'll click this continue filling button. And you can tap the other sections to fill them in as well. Then we can grab our brush tool and you can just kind of clean it up if there was anything that didn't get filled in. And then you can kind of smooth things out a little bit too. So this is our main tree here that we're going to have a bunch of scattered around. So let's go ahead and just grab our arrow tool. So we'll have a few bigger ones that are like closer to the front of our picture, um, right behind this white hill. So we'll, we'll, we'll make this one of those. So let's grab the arrow tool, set it to uniform. If you need to resize it at all, you can. I do want it to be just like a good, like medium size. And then we're just going to kind of hide it behind our hill here and stuff. So we'll have one kind of going maybe off the screen over here. Go to our layer menu, make a duplicate of this one. Grab it and we'll kind of maybe move it closer to the middle. And I do just kind of want the bottoms cut off. But if yours isn't cut off all the way, that's okay too. But I'm just going to kind of cut the bottoms of mine off. So maybe I'll just kind of place this here and then we'll do one more duplicate and I will place it on the left side here. Kind of going off quite a bit because we'll have our main big tree right in the right on the right side here. So we just kind of maybe want to see the edge of this one here. Okay, so then we're going to make some smaller ones in the way background. So we are going to go to our layer menu. We are going to make a duplicate of this layer. Click the arrow tool, downsize it quite a bit so it's pretty small, about like this maybe. And then I'm just going to kind of place these around as well. So maybe I'll place one about here, 
I'll go to my layer menu, make another duplicate of this small one now and move it around. So I'll place one there, make another duplicate, and then maybe I'll place a couple over here like so. So just kind of as many as you can fit or want to fit. Again, we'll have our tree going right here that will cover up a good chunk of it, but then we'll have our skis on the left side here, but you'll still be able to see behind them more. So just kind of place them wherever you would like. And then the biggest thing that we need to do is add a little bit of a shadow behind them. So we are going to do that by going back to our snow layer that we are right in front of right now. So it's the one right behind all of our trees. So find that layer, grab this second color on the second row, and we are going to grab the soft brush under the airbrushing category. So find that and we are going to drop the size pretty small to like two to three percent, very, very tiny. And I'm just going to make some little shadows under my tree coming from the same direction as my light is. So my light's coming from the top right. So these are going to go off to the left side like this. So I'm just going to kind of make a nice like shadowy blob in that direction. So then same thing here. It'll be kind of like going out to the left. And it's kind of like a another oval shape it but it you know comes to like a point here where the top of our tree is being shadowed so this one's kind of like straight under the sun so it'll just maybe tilt a teeny bit to the left but for the most part it'll just kind of be a more straight on blob and then this one the light's kind of coming almost from to the left of it so our shadow will go in the other direction like so Okay, so go ahead and make those, and then once that is done, we will move on to our foreground objects. So our skis and our tree, we will probably do our tree first since we just made these other trees. So let's go ahead and we are going to add this at the very top of our layer menu, and we are not going to turn it into a clipping mask because the top of our tree is going to stick out outside of our circles here. So we are going to grab the next color in line, the third one on the second row, and we are going to switch back to our monoline brush under the calligraphy tab. My brush is still at about 30%. Okay, and our tree is going to be kind of a similar shape to our other ones, but it's going to be a lot more detailed since it's so close to us. So I'm just going to start kind of up here. We can move it around later. So I'm going to start at a point and I'm going to again just kind of make similar shapes to what I made before. So but we're going to do multiple layers to make up our tree. So instead of drawing them all on one layer, we're going to draw each section of the tree top down on separate layers that we're going to shadow and add, add shadows and highlights to. So we're going to draw the very top little section here. So I'm just going to start at any point and I'm just going to draw down and make some of these curved lines again and then kind of round it at the top. So something like this, that was a really rough sketch, but so this one's just going to have four sections and we want our two side ones to be shorter than our middle ones. So I'm just going to try that again and do a little bit better job this time. So something kind of like this. And then again, just round it at the top, smooth it out if you need to. We want it to be semi-pointy at the top. We don't want it to be super round. And then go ahead and fill that in. So that is like the first section of our tree. Okay, so first things first, I'm just going to straighten this up a little bit. It's a little like leaning to the left. So I'm going to click my arrow tool and just move it to the right a little bit. So it just feels a little more straight up and down. We can make some more adjustments to the whole tree later, but this will give us a good starting point. So then we're just going to do the same thing again on a new layer underneath it and a little bit bigger this time. So we'll go to our layer menu, add a new layer, drag it below the layer that we already have. It will automatically turn into a clipping mask with these other layers, but we need to turn that off. So let's click on it and turn off clipping mask. Okay, so same brush and everything, and I'm just going to start inside here. So maybe like right about where these two meet, this little crevice on the left here. And I'm just going to do the same thing, just a little bit bigger this time. So something like this, and then I'm just going to kind of connect this at the top 
in any real shape just behind our other layer and go ahead and fill it in. So we're just going to keep doing this all the way down. I'm just going to kind of smooth some of this out a little bit as I go. Okay, so we'll go to our layer menu. We'll add a new layer. We'll drag it below this layer so it's under our previous two. Click on it, turn off clipping mask. And again, we'll do the same thing, starting again kind of inside a little bit. Kind of bigger than our one before. Connect it at the top and fill it in. Just going to kind of even it out a little bit, make it a little bigger on the left side. That side was kind of small. So again, just as you go, kind of make some adjustments if necessary. And then we'll add another new layer, drag it below, click on it, turn off clipping mask. And again, fill it in. So that was our fourth one. So we'll just add one more at the very bottom. So again, new layer, drag it below and turn off clipping mask. And this one's gonna end up being mostly hidden, but we will still do it anyways. And fill it in. Okay, so this is now our entire tree. So now you can make any more adjustments that you need to. Um, for example, on this fourth this fourth row here, this left side is just kind of like, not as like round and nice as I would like it to be. So I'm just gonna go back to that layer, kind of adjust it now that I can see like the whole picture. So just make some little changes. One thing you can also do is go to a layer Click the arrow tool and you can set it to distort and you can kind of adjust the angles. So this kind of made my branch like poke out a little bit more. So if your branches are too inward, you can do that arrow tool on distort to kind of get that and use the corners and just kind of get the edges to stick out a little bit more. So we might do that on some of them like so, so that we get some nice rows going down. Uh, one thing you want to do too is straighten it if you need to. If you need to, if your sections are all lined up pretty nicely, but your trees like crooked, you can straighten them all at once. So go to your layer menu, have one selected, slide right on the others to select them as well, until you have all five of them selected. And then you can click the arrow tool and you can kind of move them together to kind of straighten them out. So there, that kind of helped straighten mine out a bit. If you need to straighten the sections individually, you can. If any of them are kind of crooked, you can do so. But the next thing we're going to do is add shadows and highlights, and that will also help us just see the different sections of our trees so that we can make some more adjustments if necessary as well. So let's do that now, add all the shadows and highlights. So we are going to go to our layer menu and set every single one of these layers to alpha lock. So we'll do that all right now so that we don't have to come back and set them. Just make sure they're all set to alpha lock right away. We will start on this bottom layer here, the very bottom one. We will grab the next color and line, the fourth color on the second row. And we are going to switch to our soft brush under the airbrushing category. So this is our darker green, so we'll make some shadows with this. So let's set this to like 5%. And essentially, I'm just going to start right on the left side here where my next level starts. So this fourth level starts, but we're on our bottom most section. But we're going to start right here because this will help. Once we start drawing, this will help kind of reveal where our tree is above it or where our branches are above it. And then I'm just going to kind of outline all of that in a shadow color right there so there's just a nice shadow at the base of our other layer just kind of tracing the little sections like so then we'll grab our next color the fifth one on the second row a little bit lighter and we will add this to the edges and bottoms of our branches here like so very very lightly to add some nice highlight 
Then we'll grab the brightest color, the sixth one on the second row. We'll drop our brush size down a little bit to like 3%. And I'm just going to add this kind of still just in a few different sections. So I'll just pick like maybe my biggest branches and pick like the very edges of them to add like a nicer highlight there. So we get some good variation of different shades. Okay, so then we'll go to our next layer and do the same thing. So we'll just go up to the next one above it. Go back to our darkest color, the fourth one on the second row. Drag our brush up back to like four or five percent. And again, start kind of at our next level at the so at the top of the one that we're on and kind of just start lightly dragging around till we kind of see the outline of our shape above it and add our shadow there like so. Grab the next color, the fifth one on the second row, and again add some highlights to the edges. And then again our lightest color still, we'll drop our size a little bit and add those very bright highlights again very lightly to some of our main edges there. Okay, next layer. So we're on our middle one now, our third one. Grab our darkest color. We could potentially even start leaving our size a little lower at like 4%. And again, start here at the top so that we can see the outline of the shape above us. And if you ever do too much, just undo it and try again. But there, we have a nice shadow there. We'll grab our next color, the fifth one, to highlight with. And our brightest one, drop our size a little bit. And our second to last one here, so our second one from the top, switch back to our darker color, fourth on the second row, back to like 4%. And again, do our little shadow outline. And then our fifth color to do our little highlight. And our sixth color. Okay, and then on our top one, now we will be on our very top one. We don't have any shadows to do, so we'll just skip straight to this fifth color on the second row to do some highlights at about three or four percent. And we'll highlight like the whole kind of top area to give that like a little bit of a glow up there and then kind of just the lower parts of the branches as well like so so in the middle we'll just kind of be untouched and just kind of our base color then we'll grab our brightest highlight color sixth one on the second row again and drop our brush size add a little bit of this right to the top and then the nice edges there like so Okay, so that's it for our tree now. So that was like our main tree that we wanted to make. So that's going to be at the very forefront of our picture. So we do want the top part sticking outside of the circle, but we want the bottom part to be below this edge. And we're going to erase some of it so that it's, you know, attached to our main circle at the bottom, but sticking out at the top still. So to do that, we are going to go to our layer menu and first things first we want to make any adjustments because we're about to snap all of our layers together so make any other adjustments that you need to to the shapes or shading and highlights of these sections but as soon as you are all finished we are going to go to our layer menu and snap these all to one layer like so click our arrow tool you can do any rotating or anything but the biggest thing is we're just going to resize it now so I'm going to set it to uniform and I'm just going to increase the size a bit until this until this bottom part is completely covered so there's no white spaces so even like right here there's this teeniest little bit of white part there 
you can have the teeniest bit, I guess. We're going to erase most of this bottom stuff, though. So just get it to a place where you like it, potentially just with no white showing at all at the bottom. And just kind of nestled on the right side here. I might even set mine to freeform and make it a little bit skinnier so that we're not taking up so much room. So maybe about right there. So then I can kind of see like my trees in the background. If you cover up some of the trees in the background, that's totally fine. Um, but just kind of place it over here on the right side somewhere. Okay, and then once you have it in a good spot, here is how we're going to erase anything outside of our circle here. So we can't set it to a clipping mask because then our top part will disappear as it's clipped to this circle shape. So we can't do a clipping mask. But to get this part erased at the bottom here, we are going to go to our layer menu and find our main circle layer that everything is clipped to. So it should be right above our like darker purple circle, the one above that with like our little gradient sun on it. Find that layer, click on it and click select. If yours filled in with green like so because you have color fill turned on, go ahead and click to turn off color fill. And then you should see diagonal lines outside of our circle, which means that the inside of our circle is selected, but we want the outside selected where our diagonal lines are. So to do that, we're just going to hit invert. And now you should see the diagonal lines on the middle of our circle where our picture is, which means that the outside is selected. So with that set up, we are going to go to our layer menu and find our tree layer at the very top and, and select it. Click the eraser tool, which I have set to the monoline brush at 100%. And I'm just going to start erasing right on the edge where that circle edge is. And as you can see, it just erases everything outside the circle in the selected area and nothing inside where the diagonal lines are. So we're just going to erase everything on the outside. So even, you know, if we went up here, you would erase that as well. But we obviously don't want that. We want that part still sticking out and to just erase everything on the bottom. So boom, once you're done erasing, you can click the selection tool to turn that off. And now this is what we are left with. Okay, so next up is our skis and poles. So we are going to add those above our tree layer here at the very top. So let's just go ahead and add a brand new layer. Go ahead and grab the fourth color on the bottom row to start. So the first three colors are our pole colors, but we're going to make our skis first. So this first ski color is this fourth one on the bottom row. We are going to switch back to our monoline brush under the calligraphy tab. Go ahead and have that set still to about 30%. And to make our ski, we are just going to, it's going to just be basically a rectangle with like a curvy pointy part of the top. So to do that, we are going to first make our rectangle. So we're going to grab our selection tool, set it to rectangle with color fill turned on. And I'm just going to make a nice, tall, skinny rectangle right about here. Nice and big going off our picture even, or but place it wherever we can always change, you know, the placement of it. But go ahead and do that and let it go to fill it in. Click our brush tool now, which should be set to the monoline brush at about 30%. And I'm gonna zoom in on the top here and at the top, we are just going to kind of make a little pointy area that kind of curves out and then curves back in on each side like so and then fill that in. And we want it to be nice and smooth with our ski so we'll just kind of smooth it down a little bit further like so. And then we don't want it to be too, too perfect like this. So I'm going to grab my arrow tool to select it, set it to warp, and just kind of make some adjustments throughout the ski, kind of maybe making it like skinnier at the bottom and the middle. Just kind of adjusting it however you see fit. So we end up kind of with something like this. I'm going to click my arrow tool, set it to uniform, and then you can move it around and resize it if you need to. You can also set it to freeform to make it just skinnier or taller. 
but I'm going to have this one kind of sticking off quite a bit here on the top left side of my circle, but then the bottom of it will be kind of nestled in my snow here, like so. To make it look more like it's sticking in the snow, we are going to grab our eraser tool, also set to the monoline brush at about 30%. And then at the bottom, we are just going to erase kind of like a little curvy, little wavy line at the bottom, which kind of represents like the snow that it's sticking in. So that it's not like a perfectly straight line at the bottom, it's like a little wavy, bumpy area. Okay, so that's our first ski, and we are going to now add some shadows and highlights, and then we are going to actually duplicate it for our second ski. So we're going to do all the shading and highlighting on this one first. So we are going to go to our layer menu, click on this layer, and set it to alpha lock. Grab the next color and line, the fifth one on the bottom row, the lighter color, and switch back to our soft brush under the airbrushing category. We'll set this to like 7% or so, and we're just going to very lightly add this to the top area of the ski to give like a nice little highlight there. I'm going to push harder at the very top and then push lighter as I get closer to the middle to kind of blend it through, like so. Then we'll grab the darker color, the sixth one on the bottom row, and do the same thing at the bottom. So start at the bottom, push harder and then let it and then push lighter as we get closer to the middle so this just adds a nice good variation from top to bottom and then to make the ski look a little more 3d we're going to go to our layer menu make a duplicate of this layer so slide to the left and hit duplicate click on the bottom one which should already be set to alpha lock grab the next color in line the seventh one on the bottom row and go back to our layer this one on the bottom with alpha lock turned on click on it and click fill layer so you should see that it fills the whole thing like a darker red color we can't see it because it's obviously hidden behind our main ski layer on top with all of our shading but click the arrow tool now click on distort and i am just going to grab this this left middle button here and drag it to the left just a little bit and you should see the darker red color kind of pop out in the back and that kind of makes it look 3D. So I just moved it out just a teeny bit like so. Now go to our layer menu, snap those two layers together so they're all on one layer and now we will make our duplicate. So slide to the left and hit duplicate for our other ski Click the arrow tool, and we are first going to click flip horizontal, so it's facing the other direction. Move it around. I'm going to set it to free form and just kind of change it just a little bit. Maybe change the angle even just a teeny bit. I'll rotate it to the, to the right using the green button at the top. And just kind of place it here like so. And now we have our two skis. I want them placed a little closer to the left so we have a little bit more room for our poles. So I'm going to go to my layer menu and move both of them at the same time. So I have one selected, I'll slide right on the other one to select it as well. Click my arrow tool and just move it over just a little bit. Like so, make sure they're still nestled nicely in the snow there. Okay, awesome. So now we're going to make the poles. So let's go to our layer menu, add a new layer grab the first color on the last row of our color palette grab our selection tool again with rectangle and color fill turned on and we are going to make a very very skinny vertical rectangle like so we're gonna make it a bit shorter than our skis were so right about there that part is super easy. So now we're going to make the handle. So we'll add that on a new layer. So add a new layer on our layer menu. Grab the second color on the last row of the color palette and grab our selection tool again with rectangle and color fill turned on. And we're just going to make a bigger rectangle towards the top of our ski, ski pole, like so. A nice thick one. Pretty short though, about the size that the handle would be. Click the arrow tool if you need to, to resize it at all, or center it on top of our pole right at the top here, like so. Mine's a little bit big, so I'm going to downsize it a little bit and place it again nicely there. 
Then to make it look a little softer and more realistic, we're going to use this same color, be on this same layer for our handle, and switch back to our monoline brush. We're going to drop our brush size to about 10%, and I'm just going to make a slightly curved line at the top here of my handle and at the bottom as well, just to give it a bit of a different shape. And then to make the little loops that your hand would go through, I'm just going to start kind of on the left side here where the handle meets the pole. And I am going to just make a quick little loop-de-loop, -loop, hold it down until Procreate turns it into a nice perfect ellipse. And then click the ellipse button at the top to edit it if you need to. And we'll just kind of make it real skinny and just nestle it nicely right here towards the bottom of my handle. Like so. So that is it for the pole. So now again, we're going to do the same thing to make the duplicate. So first things first, we'll snap these two layers together so that they're all on one layer, the pole and the handle. Uh, click the arrow tool and adjust it if you need to at all. I might make it a little bit smaller. I'm going to rotate it just the teeniest bit to the left at the top. And then I am going to go to my layer menu, make a duplicate of it select the bottom one so this one will be behind click the arrow tool and i'm just first going to click flip horizontal so that our handles on the or so that our loop is on the other side rotate it slightly to the right drag it down a little bit so it's kind of at a different angle and it, you know the bottom of it sticks out a little further like so so just kind of position them wherever you would like to if you want to move both of them, go ahead and select both of them. And I might just move them over a little bit from my skis a little more, like so. And then the main thing is that we need to add just a teeny bit of a shadow on our back mouse pole. So that is this bottom one. So select the bottom pole, click on the layer and set it to alpha lock. Grab our dark brown color, the third one on the last row and switch back to our soft brush under the airbrushing category. We'll have that set to just like 5% and I'm just going to right where this top pole intersects, I am just going to lightly add a little bit of a shadow so as soon as you start drawing you'll kind of see this one be highlighted a little bit with our shadow below it. So that just kind of adds a little bit more depth to our poles there. So again, move everything around however you see fit, adjust the sizes, whatever you think looks good. And then the last main thing that we need to do here is add some shadows to our skis and our poles that are on the snow here. So to do that, we're going to go back to our snow layer. So our snow layer is this top layer right underneath our main tree layer. It should be above all of our other small trees. So click on that layer, that is the layer we want to be on. Grab the last color on the last row of the color palette, it's eighth in line. And we are actually going to switch to the soft airbrush under the airbrushing category. So it's down a little further, it's a lot skinnier. We are going to have that set to about 10%. And I am just going to, again, our light is coming from like the top right a little bit. So my shadows are going to go a teeny bit down and to the left. So I'm just going to start on this first left ski here, right at the bottom. Just start there and start kind of drawing a shadow from edge to edge. Like so. Jump to the next one. Same thing. And then our poles will obviously just have some really skinny shadows. Like so. Okay, and then we just have one more step and that is to add a nice shadow to our entire circle here to kind of make it pop from the page a little bit. So to do that, we are going to go to our layer menu and we are going to add a layer right below our like purple circle layer here, right above our like gradient background layer, right in between those two. Click the N on this layer and drag it up to multiply. 
and we're going to use the same color that we're already on this eighth one on the last row and we're going to switch back to our monoline brush under the calligraphy tab we can go ahead and set that back up to like 30 percent and essentially we're just going to have like a nice diagonal strip of shadow going off the screen to the bottom right so i'm going to start kind of like in this bottom left corner of my circle here start right behind it draw a straight line hold it down touch your finger to the screen to pick an angle okay click the line button at the top to edit it we don't want to change the angle at all but we just want to line it up nicely so you know we don't want it in too far where there's a nice like dip in between the circle and the line we kind of want it to be very seamless so i'm going to drag it out about as far as i can go without like having it stick out from our circle at all so just nestle it right in right there and then we're going to do the same thing on the other side so about opposite from this one the top right corner we're going to start there behind the circle draw a straight line hold it down touch your finger to the screen till you find the same angle and you should know it should be parallel to the one that we drew before so it won't go it won't get skinnier anywhere it'll stay the same width the whole way and it should go off the screen about at the same area so this one's about halfway through this one's about halfway through but again click edit line at the top and just zoom in and make sure that we're just kind of going right off the circle here nice and smoothly like so then what we need to do is kind of essentially connect these two lines but we can't see them so i'm just going to kind of start here draw behind all my stuff till i think i hit that line on the other side without going you know without drawing outside of our shape at all and then go ahead and fill it in and if it fills in that means that you closed the shape if not if you have a hard time you can always go back and you can shut off these other layers till you can see your line and just make sure that it's like touching all the way through and then go ahead and fill that in like so so now we have our nice big shadow so that is our final step so that completes our drawing today so i hope you had fun if you did go ahead and give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more tutorials from me in the future if you would like to share your drawing on instagram i would love to see it so go ahead and post it and then tag me so that i can check it out while you're there go ahead and give me a follow so that you can see what i'm working on next thanks for watching